men are good, as are you. And today we're going to be talking about SMC. SMC, and if you don't know what that is, hang on just a second. Single by chance, mothers by choice. Single mothers by choice. Mine is Prince Charming, Single Mothers by Choice. SMC stands for Single Mothers by Choice. This whole idea of women in their 30s who are successful and, and profitable and doing well, choosing to get inseminated rather than to have a relationship with the father. Hmm. Okay. And that's one piece of it, but the next piece is they're saying that their children do just as well as two parent families. And of course, this flies in the face of about 25 years of research on fatherlessness. This has been very potent research that literally has come to, in, the, in the last five to 10 years to say that we now know that fatherlessness causes problems. So in the face of that kind of research, they're saying, wait a minute, single mothers by choice do it just as good and sometimes better. Oh, boy. So let's take a look at how they're trying to push this idea. Look at this. Why single moms are crushing it. Okay, crushing it. You know, they're just pushing this idea that single moms by choice are doing a wonderful job. And one of the things you notice when you look at these articles, and we're going to look at quite a few, but about maybe half of them have a uh, <laughs> have a reference to a study that was done, a study by a woman by the name of Matilda Bruways or something like that, and it's a study about single mothers by choice. But the problem is, you can't find it. <laughs> oh boy. There she is. There's the supposed researcher of this uh, of this piece of research. Yes, Matilda Bruways, I think. And here's one of the things she says. Bruways saw no significant differences in children's well-being or in parental stress or emotional involvement between family types. So in other words, the kids are just as healthy in these single mom by choice families as they are any place else. Yeah, and if you look down to the bottom paragraph of the first image, you see the, the growing ranks in that one. In the middle of the paragraph, it says, a study presented in July at the annual meeting, blah, 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 talks about single mothers by choice. So let's hit that link and let's see where we go. Bingo. Uh-oh. Online gambling is more addictive than casino gambling. Hmm, doesn't really have much to do with single mothers by choice. Now it does it. And this is very common. If you look at all these articles we're going to look at today, one of the things you find out is there's no source. They're using what they call citation abuse. It's what, what's his name? Um, Strauss said years ago, he said the feminist researchers, one of the things he said was they use this thing, citation abuse, basically, where they say, oh, well, this proves that. And you go and click the, the reference and it's not there. Or it says something else. This is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So they do the same thing as online. It's even easier online because you can just put in a link to anything you want and say, well, the sky is actually purple, and here is proof from this research, and you hyperlink research, and it goes to the Weather Bureau. You know, <laughs> it doesn't prove anything. And a lot of people simply don't click on these links, and they just get just taken in by the way it's presented. This is research it was done by such and such and such and such. Oh, boy. So here's Matilda. Here she is in the page that uh, from the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology, which is the one that sp apparently sponsored or the research was presented to this group and makes you wonder a little bit because I wonder if these guys aren't financially invested in uh, sperm banks. Um, but who knows? That's another aside altogether. But it, what the important thing here is look at Matilda's little bio there. My current position is as a research assistant. Hmm. Research assistant. But just look at all the articles we're going to see today where she's quoted as having been the researcher. Sometimes they'll say she's a research assistant, but a lot of times they say, you know, the study was done by such and such. And, and if you look at the video of her, there's a little video of her. She talks about her study and this and that. And maybe, in fact, it was published someplace, but I can't find it. 
And another possibility is maybe she did the study, but it never got published. And I guess that tells you something too, you know, if it doesn't get published. But maybe you can have a look for it. Search on her name and see if you can find anything done. I searched databases from uh, universities and, and journal databases, and I couldn't find a thing. Anyway, let's go ahead. Children raised by single mothers do not suffer. Really? Call the Buddha immediately. Tell him that we have found an ending to suffering. <laughs> All they have to do is get into a single mother by choice family and suffering is ended. What a bizarre thing to say in print. Children raised by single mothers do not suffer. Are you kidding me? Academics discover there's no difference to their mental health compared to those who have a traditional family. So are you getting the idea? Oh, boy. And Matilda was in this one, too. They call her research assistant here. Research assistant Matilda Braywaz was from the University of Amsterdam said children in both family types are doing well in terms of their well-being. You see the kind of things they're saying? And then the last paragraph of this little clip says, she added that the wrong assumption that growing up without a father is not good for children is based on research into divorced families who have experienced conflict. So she's negating all of this research by saying, well, really, the problem was that in these divorced families, children just had problems. If they hadn't been divorced, they wouldn't have had these problems. And we'll get into that in a minute when we look at the fatherlessness research. But uh, Matilda, you're, you're shifting the ground here. You know, but look at how desperate they are to say this. You know, to say something like that, when in fact the fatherlessness research has been showing that fatherlessness causes problems, causes it. Okay, moving ahead. Study, no difference in well-being of kids raised in single mom homes. Getting the idea? No difference. Then I ran into this little article, the single mother by choice myth. And this was two female sociologists who had a look at the single mother by choice piece. And they scratched their heads and says, no, I don't think this is right. Because one of the things they talk about the single mothers by choice are women in their 30s, women who've been highly educated, have at least a, a BA, and women who are successful in the job market, who are actually going out and getting inseminated and choosing this single mothers by choice. So these two sociologists looked at it, and they looked for the parameters that this group is setting, and what do they think they found? Look at these charts they put out. Oh, boy. The first one, by intendedness and age of mother, non-marital first births. That first solid line said, oh, oh it's about 46%. The second dotted line is intended births, and that's about, gosh, close to 8%, something like that. But look at the bottom line. Yes, the bottom line is the bottom line, and it's almost zero. Intended births, age 35 plus, with a BA. Hmm, <laughs> almost zero. So what they're talking about is pretty much, um, you know, it's non-existent. And what this article pointed out, and I thought it was an interesting idea, was that maybe what's going on is that they are um, actually the people who are journalists and therapists are doing this more often than anybody else. And they're thinking everyone else should be doing it because they're doing it. It's kind of a, well, everyone should be like me syndrome. But anyway, you can look at these three charts. It's, it's fascinating stuff. Okay. Japan single mothers by choice fight stigma, seek to change perceptions. Three Jewish, these Jewish matriarchs are single moms by choice. Children in single mom by choice families do just as well as those in two parent families. That's from Parents Magazine. And look, you can see the very attractive blonde with her daughter on her back. And if you look at these pictures, what you find is in all these articles, it's very attractive women with their daughters. You see a son every now and then, but mostly it's with their daughters. Hmm, how about that? Children in single mother by choice families do just as well as those in two parent families. Eureka alert. Study says kids of single moms by choice are just as happy as those in two parent families. Oh boy. Myth busted kids of single mothers don't suffer. We're back to the don't suffering thing. Call the Buddha. We found a way to keep kids from suffering. 
Oh man, I mean, these are these people desperate or what? But look at this. Look at this picture. And look at the, uh, the little girl there with the girl boss sign. I can imagine what that family was like. Three females and she's pointing to the girl boss. Oh boy, I wouldn't want to be a brother. Anyway, re- listen to what they said. The researchers also noted, and they're talking about the Brewways research, that it seems likely that any negative influence on child development depends more on a troubled parent-child relationship and not on the absence of a father. <laughs> so they're literally saying, Father absence is not really a problem. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, this is the McClanahan research. You can see her page here, and I'll definitely link this below so you can see it, because it's very, very much worth reading. But basically, McClanahan is the one who has taken fatherlessness and basically proven that it causes these troubles. And she's been at it a while. And this latest article here, which is 2013, 2014, something like that, she addresses some of the concerns that sociologists had about the fatherlessness research and including the idea that, oh, it's just because of divorce. And they go through all kinds of different ways to research things to try and tease out what is it that's causing these problems. What might it be? Listen to this. The literature on father absence is frequently criticized for its use of cross-sectional data and methods that fail to take into account a possible omitted variable bias and reverse causality. We review studies that have responded to this critique by employing a variety of innovative research designs, and I won't bore you with the rest of it. But basically what she's saying is they've found research designs to get around this. And guess what she found? She found that fatherlessness, even though it's a little bit less than the other studies, is still causative. It's still causative. You can't get around it. No matter how many times you smile with the blonde and her daughter and say single mothers by choice. Hmm. I'm a single mother by choice. One parent can be better than two. Oh, it's like Obama said, girls do it better than boys and do it in heels. You know, better than two. Of course, this is the Washington Post speaking. They can do it better than two. Oh, my gosh. This is absolutely insane. But look what the post says. Look at the second paragraph here. Single motherhood is no longer an unusual choice. And they leave a link. Now, where does that link go? Oh, the link goes to a website, single mothers by choice. Okay. But guess what? When you look at Alexa for this particular website, you find that it's ranked 1,073,460th on the Internet. I don't think that we can use this as a source to prove much of anything. Yeah. But let's look at the paragraph again. Most do not live in poverty, use food stamps, or go to food pantries. And they leave a link for that. And the link they leave, this is the Washington Post, goes to a research study on um, stay-at-home moms. Not single mothers by choice, stay-at-home moms. And basically, if you look at the numbers there, I mean, they're saying that a lot of these stay-at-home moms and a lot of the single mothers are in poverty. They are in poverty. And I think it's 90% of those on welfare are single mothers. Come on, you're pushing the envelope here. And the last one says, according to the Census Bureau, blah, 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 blah. And look at the link for this one. Uh Uh-oh, oops, we're really sorry, but the page you requested cannot be found. And this is over and over and over again with these articles, whether it's the Washington Post or Reader's Digest or wherever. They don't really prove anything. They just use these citations. They abuse you with citations. Single moms are doing just as good a job raising their kids as two-parent families. Oh, boy, that's in mom. Science daily. You'd think something with the word science in it would do a little bit better than this. But, geez, science daily. Children and single mothers by choice families do just as well as those in two-parent families. And guess who they quote throughout the whole thing? Children in both family types are doing well in terms of their well-being, said investigator Matilda Bruise from the center of blah, 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 blah. So they call her an investigator. Yeah. Oh, well. Positive outcomes in children whose mothers choose single parenting. Oh, yes, that's in good therapy. Research shows single moms are raising kick-ass kids. Kick-ass kids. I mean, they're exaggerating to such a degree, you know they're bullshitting. It's such a degree of exaggeration. It's crazy. They're raising kick-ass kids. What the hell are they saying? This is nuts. I'm a single mother by choice, and I love it. Reader's Digest. 
This is how far these people are going. Reader's Digest. Are you kidding me? Now, I did find one study on single mothers by choice. And it was in the uh, Journal of Family Psychology. And it wasn't the one they've linked to in all of these articles. But what I did was I used the title of the article that most of these listed and searched on that. And this one came up because it was close. It wasn't the same thing. But here's the deal. Look at this. Look at this article. 51 solo families. Of course, Brewie's article was 69 solo families. So you know it's a different one. Um, and then they go through all the testing that they did with them. They gave them questionnaires, right? They gave them questionnaires. And here's the deal. They gave them questionnaires of families of single mothers by choice of kids ranging ages four to nine. Hmm. Kids aging four to nine. And the article that the research that was supposed to exist that I can't find said that she did it for ages two to six. So think about that. This is all this research is being done on single mothers by choice families of very young children. Now, think about what happens with fatherlessness, what they've shown to be proven or correlated with fatherlessness. Suicide, anxiety, rape, job failure, low empathy, being bullied, bullying, drug abuse, smoking, uh, early pregnancy, high school failure, delinquency, depression, alcohol abuse. Okay, what do all of those things have in common? You've got to be above 10 to have any of it, or at least almost all of it. Come on. So what are they studying? They're, they're saying, see, it proves that they're just as well. But guys, no, these problems don't manifest till later. It'd be like saying, you know, we studied a population of young girls, zero to seven. None of them had breast cancer. So their diet must be fine. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, it's just absolutely nutty. Absolutely nutty. Now, Warren Farrell has done a great job of helping us understand uh, the boy crisis, but also helping us understand the potency of, of father-only families. Because, you know, they talk about this whole thing about the there's, there's single mothers by choice are, are right because it's it was the abuse that the, or the problems they had in divorce that caused this stuff. But Farrell shows us that, wait a minute, um, father-only families... Father, single father families, the kids are doing quite well. Hmm, doing quite well. So it's not because of the divorce. And before you start saying, oh, they only get the good kids. No, the fathers get the problem kids. They get the kids the mothers don't want. And they're still doing well with it. So single fathers are doing well. Single mothers, not so well. Hmm, single mothers by choice. What do you make of that? So it's not due to divorce. It's something else. And we can pretty much guess it's due to fatherlessness. So go dads. Doing a good job, buddy. And I think, you know, part of this is because the dad set the limits. And moms depended on dads setting the limits. And dads depended on mom being there to nurture no matter what. And so you combine that together, you get powerful force, right? But with, with single mothers, you get no limits. Gosh, Farrell's book, he talks about these young boys saying, oh, I can pull one over on mom. All I have to do is keep asking questions, you know, but with dad, if I, if he says do something and I don't do it, I know the consequence is coming. So I just don't bother. I don't bother getting in trouble with him. Feel the difference. Oh boy. So let's summarize things. What do we got? Single mothers by choice are very rare. They hardly exist, even though the media is pushing things like crazy. Single father families do better. Yeah. So it's not a matter of where they came from in the divorce. And single father families do better, period. Negative impacts from fatherlessness are real and causative. No matter how many articles they write about single mothers by choice are wonderful, are sweet, are loving, and producing kids who don't suffer, it's bullshit. You know, it's just bull. They're not really doing good research. Research on single mothers and their children has only looked at kids less than nine years old. Oh boy, less than nine years old. What can you say? One of the things you can say is the media is lying to you. And that 
folks, is the truth. The media is lying to you, and they've been lying to you, and we need to start calling them out. When you see stuff about single mothers by choice and about how their kids are not suffering, you need to say, bullshit, that's a bunch of crap. That is simply not true. Send them this video. (laughs) But really, the media is lying to us on all sorts of fronts, whether it's politics, feminism, single motherhood. They're lying, and we need to call them out. We We need to get... A lot of people pushing them and saying they're full of crap. Because until that happens, you know, they're just going to keep pushing the same bullshit line. Anyway, as you know, men are good as are you. Come see me on Patreon and Subscribestar and regardingmen.com. Come see me on regardingmen.com. We're doing some really interesting things there that uh, we'll be telling you more about as we go along. So you all take care. We'll see you.